Watch you guys, today we're taking a look at 10 things to know about mini PCs before you buy one. Now there is tons of mini PCs on the market, all different manufacturers, all different prices and all different specifications. So we're going to go through some of the things to look out for when you're buying it. So I would say the first thing to look for is can it do what you want it to do? I.e. what do you want a mini PC for and what do you want to use it for? That's the first thing I would take a look at before I start pulling the trigger on a brand new mini PC. So how do you know a mini PC can do exactly what you want it to do? Well, you have to do a lot of research and look at a lot of videos and see whether a lot of these mini PCs are actually performing the way you want them to do. So for instance, if you want a video editing mini PC, can it video edit? Can it play AAA listed games? A lot of the time, a lot of these questions will arise and people can sort of gloss over them in their reviews. Next up, it's time to find a brand that you trust. There's many brands out there to choose from. So make sure you buy a brand that you trust that has good build quality in their mini PCs. So what type of ports does the mini PC have? This is really important because you may need a type C uh, input in there. You may need USB 4 or Thunderbolt, you may need to have DP port on there or HDMI. There's a bunch of different ones to choose from. What ports do they have on the front? Does it mean that you need a certain type of port on the front of the device or does that not matter? You need to have a look at all of the ports that are available on these particular devices. Also check whether they are good build quality, whether they're made of plastic or whether they're made of metal. You want a really good quality mini PC that can dissipate heat very well. There's many different shapes and sizes. Some are just rebrands of other types of mini PCs where they put their own label on them, and you'll see they all look very similar. B-Link are a pretty good mini PC, so start having a good look at some B-Link ones. Also, MSI do some mini PCs. You've seen me do videos on Minis forums, and you've also got ones like this one here, which is the Ace Magician. You've got plenty of different choices available which you can take a look at. And they all come in at different prices and they have all different specs on these mini PCs. So that's another thing to take a look at. Now, next up, we're gonna be talking about specs or the specifications of the mini PC itself. There is many specs available out there, whether it be an i3, i5, whether it be a Celeron, whether it be Intel or AMD, or whether you're gonna get a much more powerful 7,000 series, 5,000 series, there's tons of different uh, ones out there. Some of the ones that are still priced pretty highly are the older branded ones. So make sure you're not buying an older model compared to buying a brand new model. So there's new ones of these coming out all of the time and they all perform uh, a lot different. Some of them have a much better GPU on them than the actual other ones do. So some of them are just meant for office use and some are meant for gaming and a much more power like video editing. So check the specifications out on the FAMP manufacturer's website and see whether it fits all of your needs. Looking inside of the actual units here, next up is a really important one, which is upgradable. Is the device upgradable? Can you upgrade this mini PC? It's really important. Now you can see here, some of them allow you to put in a SSD inside here, for extra storage. Some don't have this capability. So make sure that it's capable of accepting a extra SSD inside here. A lot of them do nowadays. They come in with this particular model here where you can slide the SSD in here and you could just put the ribbon cable onto this and it will give you extra storage. Some have an extra M.2 slot on the actual board itself and some are compact in here like this one here where you can still add in a SSD here. There is an M.2 inside here with a cooler on here. So make sure you check all of the uh, mini PCs. If someone is not showing you inside, then they're not doing a full review and you want to steer clear of those particular types of reviews. I try to give as much information as I can when I'm reviewing a particular product. Now, the next thing that's really important is to check the hardware. Do they use quality hardware components inside of their build? What is the case made of? Is it made of plastic? And can it deal with the amount of tasks that you're asking it to do? Can it dissipate the heat and the design of the actual board itself? You can see here 
the components in here have got an Intel M.2 inside here. You can see this little ribbon cable here for your uh, extra storage if you want to put an SSD in here. And we have our RAM stick inside here. Some of these only have one RAM stick in them. So make sure that it has two. This only has one RAM stick, which means it's going to be running in single channel, which is not ideal. You really want dual channel. I'll take the memory out so you can see here. Just check to make sure that it is branded uh, RAM. This one is Kingston, as you can see here. And some of them use unbranded hardware on their builds, which brings the cost down for them, but they still have super high prices on these particular mini PCs. And you want to make sure that you're getting a mini PC with all the branded hardware from, say, Crucial or Kingston or Intel or any of those particular types of hardware manufacturers. B-Link, I do know, use quality components in all of their mini PCs, and they also have a quite a unique cooling system. A lot of people thought that this fan inside here was cooling the CPU, and they said it's too small. But that is the system fan, which is going to be cooling down the actual uh, system. There is another big, massive fan underneath there cooling down the CPU. And I've done tons of tests on mini PCs over the years, and some of them start thermal throttling and causing major temperature problems. So make sure that you're getting one that actually has adequate cooling for the mini PC. So let me just quickly take a look at this RAM stick here and we'll see what this one is. As you can see, this RAM stick is actually crucial, which is good quality RAM. So you don't want some unknown brand from China or Taiwan or wherever it comes from with some uh, weird name on it that you've never heard of. And the same thing for the M.2 uh, drive here. So make sure you're getting all of the quality components in there. If you don't see any of those, then step away from it. This one was an MSI model, which was pretty good. They had a mounting system here for another SSD, if you want to put that in there. And you can also VESA mount this as well. Uh, also, what I want to say is some of them allow you to configure these so MSI allow you to configure all theirs with really high-end components. So if you wanted to put, say, Western Digital Black in here, you could do, or even higher. And they've also got Kingston RAM inside here, good quality components, a well-known brand like MSI. So you could use something like this as well, which is a well-trusted brand, and you would have good warranty and return. So that is important as well, which I would say is another key component, is warranty. What is their returns policy? What is their warranty on all of their hardware? It's really important that you check out the warranty of these mini PCs because they're not cheap. Also, you want to check the pricing for the particular mini PC that you're interested in and have a good look around at some of the other prices because they're different prices all over the Internet. And uh, maybe you want to get it from, say, directly from China and get an even cheaper price. Be careful of the import duties because you can get stung there. Some of the pricing you're seeing here is some for older models and there's some for newer models. So make sure you're getting that new model of a mini PC so you're getting the best performance. And you'll probably find there's not much difference between a high-end one and a lower-end mini PC. Some are only meant for office use and some are meant for higher-end tasks like gaming and uh, video editing. You can see this B-Link SER6 Pro here, 7735HS. You see me do a video review on this one, £522. And you'll probably find some of the ones on the website and on other people's websites, they're the same price, but a lower end CPU in them. So make sure you're not getting overpriced for an older model. Okay, so next up is, can you mount it to the wall and can you VESA mount it to the back of a monitor like the MSI model here? If you can, then obviously some people want to save space and want to VESA mount it onto a monitor just like this and just make sure that you do have the bracket with it and also you can mount it just like this one here. Now, if you're looking for space saving capabilities, then make sure you can mount them on a monitor like this because these are great for offices and you can mount these straight on the back of a monitor, which take up very little space. So make sure that is a definite feature. Now, this one is a really important one, and that is the temps under load. I've seen some of these mini PCs really struggle with temperatures and they start thermal throttling and you end up with major issues. Now, I know a lot of people review some of these mini PCs and they don't show you half the stuff that I show you. Now, it's no good buying a mini PC thinking that you're going to be able to play AAA listed games all day long 
without having issues. You are going to have problems. And if you're playing something like uh, Cyberpunk on 720p with low settings, you are going to get high temps. There's no doubt about it. Because that's quite an intensive task that you're asking the mini PC to do. Next up, check what CPU it is. There's some older ones out there on the market with some older generations. Make sure you're getting the latest generation CPU in here. Then you'll have to need to choose from Intel or AMD. The choice is going to be yours at the end of the day. This is the more modern Ryzen 7 7735HS, which is around about £500. But you'll probably find some of the other ones out there on the market around about the same sort of price for older technology. So make sure you get the latest and greatest mini PCs out there. This is 8 cores and 16 threads, which is going to be plenty for most people. Now, one last thing I want to make sure you know is whether it's bare bones versus ready to go. Now, ready to go means the whole device is ready to use straight out the box. It'll have all the memory, all the storage in there, everything. And you could just use them straight away. A lot of the Intel Nooks will have what we call bare bones, which means you then have to add in your memory and you have to then add in other components like a hard drive. And this will then bump the price right up to a really expensive price. So make sure you check out whether it is bare bones or it's ready to go straight out the box. And I think that's going to be about it. That is basically 10 or more things about mini PCs you should consider before buying, because you don't want to rush out and buy one of these things because they're pretty expensive. And if you end up buying the wrong one, you're going to end up with buying a lemon, which isn't that great, and it can't do all the things that you want it to do. So follow these steps, make sure you do all your research, and you should have a mini PC to be proud of that does all of the things you want it to do. Anyway, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. I'll leave some links in the video description and I shall catch you in the very next video. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members. I really do appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the very next one or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Bye for now.